Okay, I'm trying to be less wooden in these vlogs. So you might, so I should probably actually explain what it is. Okay, so before the invention of light meters and before you could maybe afford a light meter, you had to read your exposure by the Sunny 16 rule. It would come in camera manuals and you know what? I still think it does because it's not irrelevant anymore. It's not for film cameras. It's not just for digital cameras. It still works for digital cameras. And if you watch my last video, you realize that every single camera in the world ever and that will ever be works exactly the same. So why shouldn't Sony 16 apply to absolutely everything? Now there's two levels to Sony 16 that really make the confusion. The first is exactly what it is. It's called Sony 16 because when it's sunny outside, you can shoot at F16 and you'll get the right exposure. That doesn't mean that's where it ends. If it's sunny outside and you don't want F16 because you want to have shallow depth of field and you want to go all the way around to F4, this is where it's still relevant. So, sunny 16 rule says, whatever your ISO is, your shutter speed should be the nearest reciprocal. Now, some cameras you can actually set these numbers to be exactly the same, but we'd actually be moving in thirds of a stop and some cameras can't really do that. We're just gonna talk in whole stop. So let's say our ISO is 100. Our shutter speed should then be 125. That's the nearest whole stop. So if we use that as a base, we can then move the aperture ring on the lens to control all of our exposure. If we do that, and we walk outside on a blisteringly hot sunny day, which frankly just doesn't happen in England. Anyway, if we walk outside on the sunny day, we put our aperture on 16, and then anything that the sun is broadly hitting will be correctly exposed. As that weather changes and it gets a little darker and we get a little bit more cloud in the sky, then we go to 11 and a bit more cloud and we go to eight when it's completely overcast around 5.6 and when it's sort of turning to the evening or earlier on in the morning, we're on F4, etc. It opens up from there as things get darker and darker. Now, that's a great rule, right? That's a great way of just going out and setting your camera without being too nervous about whether you're getting the exposure right. The problem with this rule comes from the fact that people think this is for only film cameras, that it's some kind of dated technique that was only really relevant to your great grandfather, or that it stops there, that those settings have to only be those settings and that you can't have any wiggle room in between them when that's just bunk. It can be any kind of settings you want. All Sony 16 will actually do for you is give you a base that you can then move away from. Because F16 really tells you the EV, the exposure value of the day. So let's work back from there. The day says Sony 16. You say, nah. F4, mate. Okay, so let's count backwards. 16 to 11 to 8 to 5.6 to 4. That's four stops of light. That's four setting changes that you're going to make your lens too bright for the scene. So what can you do? You've got two more settings to change. If you've got film, you've got one more setting to change. But if you've got digital, you've got two more settings to change. Sony 16 is actually even better on digital. So let's move something. Four stops. We've got to make it darker. So if the shutter speed can still make it darker because our ISO is on 100 and our reciprocal shutter speed had to be 125 when we're on 16, let's get four stops from the shutter speed. So we'll go from 125 to 250 to 500 to 1000 to 2000. Now our exposure is exactly the same, but we have completely different settings that are not on that Sunny 16 rule chart. And it's because the Sunny 16 rule chart is a base. That's just where you start. That's how you judge the light in order to then set your camera exactly how you want. And you can truly live by this. If you get to learning things this way, it becomes entirely second nature and you really can read the world in light, in stops, 
in settings for your camera. And there's honestly quite the joy of stepping outside, looking around and going, hmm, it's 5.6 today. And it doesn't apply outside. It doesn't apply to when it's sunny. It doesn't apply to just when it's overcast. It can apply indoors because the Sunny 16 rule still brings things down. If you can say that indoors, the exposure value is equivalent to the shade on a cloudy day then you can set the same exposure and if it's darker than that then you know you're going to open it up a little bit more. I could rant on about this for a long time so let me just put it in context. There was a question on the front page of the internet known as Reddit. Okay the question goes like this. Is the Sunny 16 rule still applicable to modern cameras? The short answer is yes. It's applicable to every single camera ever. Anyway, one user said, I still use it from time to time and it works. Why would it stop? Then there's a whole argument that people don't really use it because there's light meters. Now let me stop you there, again. Gotta stop you there. A light meter basically uses exactly the same rule. It, you tell it what one setting you want to be and it will give you all the others. That's exactly what Sunny 16 does with your eyes. And now whilst researching this video as to whether I should do it or not, and the answer is probably no, the YouTube algorithm probably isn't gonna pick this up and make it a popular video because there's a shitload of videos exactly like it. However, when I look up Sunny 16, on YouTube. Everything talks about film. Sunny 16, a film photographer's cheat code. Using the Sunny 16 rule on 35mm in my neighbourhood. Sunny 16 rule, Leica M4 HB5 film. None of those pieces of information changes how that rule works. Using Sunny 16 rule for the first time, nailed or failed, well, that would be your fault, wouldn't it? Sunny 16 rule for manual exposure simplified. Now, it doesn't even need to apply just to manual exposure. If you're in automatic exposure and your camera isn't quite doing what you expect it to do, Sunny 16 will tell you why. If you're trying to shoot at f1.4 on a bright sunny day, your camera might not have a fast enough shutter speed to actually get the exposure low enough. You just can't away from it. If it should be a sunny 16 day, we go 11, 8, 5.6, 4, 2.8, 2, 1.4. We need seven stops of exposure in there. If your camera's base is 100 and your shutter speed should then be 125, we need to get seven stops out of it from somewhere. So we can't lower the ISO, we're gonna to have to speed up the shutter. So the shutter's gonna go 250, 500, 1000, 2000, 4000, 8000. You're a stop over. It's just these ideas that this rule is somehow relevant to a tiny little niche and it's not, it's, it's how your camera works. Okay, cue dramatic change in audio quality. You thought I was gonna be sitting in that room the whole time, every single video I ever made was just gonna be me sitting in that room, maybe holding things up, throwing my arms around, busting some shapes, but no, I've made it to the garden. Uh, because I can show you, I can show you today because this is a very rare day in England where it's actually really sunny. Uh, and completely, you know what, completely cloud free. But as I said, we don't really get sunny 16 in England. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just a, a like a latitude. Is it latitude or longitude? Anyway, basically when I expose sunny 16 in the UK, when it's a day like this, I still go F11 just because we're not in the Mediterranean. It's not as bright, quite as sunny, quite as searing as it may well be in other parts of the world. But as you can see behind me, I've got the sun glaring all over the place. And if I flip the camera around, and we take a photo on this camera, that you probably can't see the screen of, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I can just about get a photo of this bright sunny area. I'm gonna take this at F11. And now to show you the difference that we can do in shade that Sunny 16 should know about is about 
three stops generally. So we're going from 11, 8, 5.6, 4. Now this area, this shaded area, is nice and exposed. So hopefully I'll just put those images on the screen because um, you know I think they will probably be some of my best work. So that's how I read Sunny 16 out here on this English sunny day. I mean, I like bright images, so this is just how I do it. You can you can be free to make some choices of your own. So what I'm gonna do now to prove that Sunny 16 is completely relevant to everything, I'm gonna go on automatic. And when I point the camera this way and take a picture of the same scene, my aperture reading is actually hovering around f11 and f13 so this camera is kind of thinking the same as me and when i go down here and we get this shaded area it's actually picking f5 it kind of picked f4.5 here 3.6 so you can see a meter is going to be doing things in sort of thirds of a stop because it is because it can but your eyes don't need to do that you can work in full stops and f4 was absolutely fine the difference between f4 and f3.5 is easily manipulated in post it's not too much of a problem it shouldn't lose highlights of a sudden it shouldn't use all the shadow detail of a sudden as you can see this area here because i mean it's in it's in bright sunlight but it's also got a little bit of shade around and so the camera's thinking you know what that's not full 16 uh you know this isn't the side of a hill with a blue sky in the background that's completely lit there's that little bit of shade and so it's not quite 16 as i originally judged it it's somewhere around f11 and f11 was fine i think the camera actually did take the photo at f11 so there it is let's go back into the studio so hopefully that's sort of dispel some myths about Sunny 16 and gives you a bit more confidence to go out and use it. I thoroughly believe that if you implement this in your day-to-day -day photography, you will be a better photographer because you will think about settings less. At that point, you won't think about them less because you're in automatic mode. You'll think about them less because you know exactly what they are and what they should be at any time. That frees you up to just compose, wait for the moment and get better photographs. So, thank you again. Please like and subscribe, share. And I know what some people might be thinking, they watched that intro video I did and I said I was gonna talk about professional photography and for some reason I'm doing all these basics. Well, the basics need to be here because the basics are always there. And in upcoming videos, I do thoroughly intend to tackle the industry a lot more. So stick with me and it'll hopefully be worthwhile. Sunny 16 Challenge, film or digital photography. What's that about? Shutterstock advert.